Well, thank you. That looks more like an obituary than a <laughs> than an encomium. But I'm glad to see it now. <laughs> Instead of having to, well, I don't know what I would do after you after I'm gone, you can play that again. Anyway, <clears throat> we think about what I did for California. It's what California's done for me, uh, for my father, for my family, for all of us. Uh, that's the great teacher, uh, the bounty we all have enjoyed and hopefully figure out how to use appropriately. That's California. I was thinking uh, as I was coming over here today, because uh, I heard they're going to do this, this little puff piece here, and I was thinking back 40 years ago, and that's interesting that the, uh, we were talking about 40 years ago, the the uh, hornblower ships. Well, 40 years ago, we had the host breakfast. Now, what's significant about that 1978 breakfast was that I was not allowed to come to the dinner the night before. No, that's true. The chamber snubbed me. <laughs> they did. So that's why I'm very appreciative for that movie, because it's shown that we're, well, we're making progress. Um, <laughs> and I went, I reread this morning, my, uh, I have my speech from 1978. It was a little long, uh, but it's always about the same thing, trying to prove that California really is prosperous, that it's not going off the cliff. And even 40 years ago, uh, there were a lot of people saying, well, uh, you know, California's, uh, the regulations, the taxes, the employment, the anti-business climate, uh, there's always an element of truth to all of that. Uh, but even then, the statistics uh, were incredible and I reeled off a number of statistics to say how great California was. Well, I got to do that again, just to, because there's still people who are saying that uh, California's a failed state. Yes, we have, um, uh, we have uh, a lot of regulations, got a lot of taxes, we got a lot of lawsuits. You know, we got enough material here and enough problems for you to have a host breakfast for the next 100 years. Because you better come here and keep lobbying, because it can get worse. <laughs> that, i got to tell you that, it can. Uh, but it gets better, too, at the same time. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking at a few, just a few numbers here. Uh, 1975, the gross domestic product of California was $175 billion. Okay? Uh, today, it's about $2.7 trillion. We're the fifth largest economy in the whole world. So, there may be a lot of problems, but somebody is figuring out how to make that 2.7 trillion. That's real money, and it's flowing out of business. By the way, the income per capita over the last eight years it's, uh, grew the best in California. Per capita income uh, grew 20%, uh, which is higher than the rest of the country. Uh, I have a whole bunch of stats, but I'm not going to read them all, just a few. Um, the, uh, oh, by the way, the thing that we always talk about, the California-Texas uh, competition. I don't know how many of you know it, uh, but Chipotle is moving into California from one of these other red or purple states. No, they actually, actually they came from Colorado, but they had some offices in Texas. But they're coming to Colorado, California because, um, you know, there may be high taxes, but people know good food. And I like Chipotle. I often go there, you can get here, you can get a dinner for about $707.75. And I go and get a burrito bowl, bring it home, get a bottle of wine, and we have a very inexpensive dinner <laughs> at the mansion. So, now what I like about Chipotle is the limited menu. You stand in the line, get either brown rice or white rice. You get black beans or pinto beans. You get, um, you know, a little beef or chicken or Tofu or, um, or what's the other, uh, pork. And then you put a little cheese, a little this, a little that, and you're out of there. I think that's a model that some of our universities need to follow. <laughs> now, I want to tell you what I mean by that. They have so damn many courses because all these professors want to teach something, one of their pet 
little projects. But then you get thousands and thousands of courses, and then the basic courses aren't available. It takes kids six years instead of four years. If they would go to a limited menu concept, everyone would graduate on time. So I know that's not politically correct or intellectually correct, because there's so much to learn. But you don't learn it all in college. You learn most of it after you leave. So get a good basic education, whatever field you're trying to do, and then get out of there. My father was always unimpressed uh, with, he wanted me to go to work. I remember I was in the seminary, and the first couple of years, all you do is pray and meditate. He said, when are you going to start doing something? <laughs> so he was what we call a go-getter. Yeah, he went right out of Lowell High School to night law school and, and to work, and it never stopped. And uh, that's the way. If you want to get ahead, you got to work. And uh, I think our forebears knew that. And talking about ships, my great-grandfather came and left Germany in 1849, Hamburg, in the good ship Perseverance. I think that's the good watchword, persevere. I wouldn't be standing here today if I didn't persevere. You, they knock you down a few times, you got to get up and uh, get going. So we, oh, I want to say something about clean, clean energy companies. This is something that is a byproduct of some of the rules. Uh, the uh, renewable portfolio standard, where we say you have to have 50% renewable electricity. Uh, the low carbon fuel standard, where we say 10% by 2020 has to be low carbon fuel, and we're going to increase it uh, to 20% by 2030. Uh, the zero emission vehicles, the uh, requirement for a certain amount of electrical storage. All of that creates incentives for business to innovate, and that's exactly what's happening. In the clean energy space, uh, you compare California to the rest of the country, California grew last year 33%, the clean energy companies. The rest of the country was 16%. The stock price went up 70% in California. So you should have bet on clean energy. 47% uh, in the rest, of, uh, the rest of the country. And the growth of employment in clean energy in California, 70% growth in employment. Rest of the country is 47%. And you could, uh, r r productivity, uh, California grew 7%. The rest of the country lost a little bit. And R&D spending, California clean energy companies, 12% of revenue invested in R&D. The rest of the, uh, the uh, country, 6%. Those, I just want to give you some hard numbers that real things are happening. Money invested, uh, investing in smart people, and the innovation is what comes. And that reminds me, by the way, you saw the uh, Oakland School for the Arts, and you saw the Oakland uh, Military Institute. I want to say something about both. When I started those, I started the military school first, and then I felt a little guilty about being so militaristic in the city of Oakland, so I thought I'd better create something a little, a little more uh, a little artsy, a little more artistic. So I did. But Here's the point. We didn't. Have, how do we get that going? We got the city to give us free space at the army base for the military school. We the uh, uh, art school. We had no place to go, and uh, so we had to restore the Fox Theater. It cost 75 million dollars. I had no idea where that was going to come from. Well, luckily we still had redevelopment, so I got 35 million there, and then we got tax credits, and uh, we actually got a billboard that uh, gives uh, almost a million dollars a year. Uh, on the, on the, that was uh, cited on the, on the Bay Bridge. We had to do a lot of things. The point I'm trying to make is when I started that, I had an idea and a determination. And the first few years, uh, we had a hard time finding students. Now each school is turning away students. But we persisted. 15 years in the case of one, 14 in the other. And it did take money. And we started, we didn't know how it was going to get there. Well, you can say that a lot of, about a lot of things. You have a dream. If you have the brains and the willpower, you can get it done. But you got to invest the money. You need money, you need brains, you need creativity, and you need courage. And that's what built California, that's what built those schools, and that'll continue to build us. And that's why we're here. We're talking about people who started businesses or kept them going in so many different ways. And California is not one person, not one great businessman or one uh, famous politician. It's this diverse, a group of immigrants, uh, 40 million people that are in, inhabiting a space that uh, for thousands of years had only room for 300,000. And when you put 40 million people in a place designed for 300,000, there's only one way to do that. You have to invest, you have to create, you have to engineer. 
And that's why uh, we, we do, we built the roads and the bridges and the trains and the tunnels and the schools and the dams and the aqueducts and all the rest of it. And you can't stop. California is not a pristine wilderness. It's a highly engineered, highly sophisticated, advanced civilization that only continues if it continues that investment. And that's why I'm very glad the chamber, uh, I think the chamber, you're supporting the gas tax, right, guys? <laughs> and I know you don't like it. Get now, I don't even like the word. I've been successful in politics by never using the word tax. We talk about revenue, we talk about other things. But this is a test. Uh, yeah, it costs money. Our roads and bridges, we're about 60 billion behind in deferred maintenance. If you don't fix the roof, the roof leaks, the wallpaper gets bad, the rugs get bad. By the way, we have a good example if you don't invest. The mansion was left over there after the Reagans left in 67, and they fixed it a little bit, finally they fixed the roof, but the wallpaper was falling off. Uh, you know, the, it smelled a little bit, had kind of a dank smell. There was only one toilet. Uh, there was only water, only one little sink on the first floor. That was a vibrant living place where 14 governors have lived. And so do we just let it rot? No, we, we brought it back. And I was very interested to learn the first governor to move into the governor's mansion in California was George Pardee. Now, you all know who George Pardee is. No, you don't know. He was. He was the only other mayor of Oakland to become governor of California. <laughs> he moved in in 1903. The other little, I'm giving you some factoids this morning. The other interesting point is this mansion was built by a businessman. Uh, and it was built in the same year, 1878, that my grandmother was born. So I feel a certain connection here. And when I walk in that mansion, I see what it is. It used to be people would come by and they'd go up to the second floor and they'd see uh, one of the rooms had one of my mother's ball gowns from the inauguration. I mean, it was a museum. But California is not a museum. We're a dynamic laboratory of change and innovation. And that mansion is alive today. We have uh, many visitors from local, national, and international. I think it's a symbol of bringing things back with investment. And our roads, they're crumbling too. And you have to fix them and it costs money. That's our common effort that we do through a government, a tax, a spending. We have now uh, thousands of projects that are gonna be uh, funded uh, by this uh, bill. And it really, we all think of ourselves as California number one, America number one. Well, wait a minute, what about China? China thinks they're number one, and they're working to be number one. And they have over a trillion dollars in infrastructure spending every year. They're, they're putting the money out. They're building roads, uh, high-speed rail, uh, dams, all the rest of it. They are investing in not only uh, uh, domestically, but internationally. They're investing in Africa and Asia, another trillion dollars. So if America wants to be great, we have to invest in our future. That's for Washington, and hopefully they'll get it right. Here in California, we've made the commitment, and that's why it's so important that we defeat that effort to pull back to leave our roads to crumble, our bridges to remain unsafe. I know it's not easy, but it's a test. Can we pay the price of our great advanced civilization that for the last 40 years, and even the last 150 years, has continued to grow because people invested, people built. And they always say, when they wanted to build BART, people say, oh no, how are we gonna build that BART? That's a boondoggle. That's what the mayor of Berkeley said. When my father proposed the water plant, there's a lot of opposition, there still is. But people, they did things. And because of that, Eisenhower did the whole national freeway system, and that built California and so many other states. So, uh, I just mentioned that. We have a lot of projects coming down, I won't bore you with all of them, tunnels and trains and dams and aqueducts. Lots of stuff, but at the heart, that's what keeps California the great place that it is. You in business, you create the products, the services, but government creates the infrastructure. And when we work together, we make it, what happen is what we have. So that's one point. The other thing I wanna say is something I've re realized now that I didn't get 40 years ago is how cyclical uh, our revenues are, how cyclical the economy is. We've had 10 uh, recessions since World War II. Uh, we've had nine 
we're in our ninth, uh, we're in our tenth, I guess, tenth recovery. And the longest recovery uh, lasted 10 years, and then it went, uh, went down. Uh, the average of recovery is about seven years, and then you get into the recession. So we have a very cyclical up and down. We're in the ninth year, and I know I keep saying, watch out, it's got to go down. Uh, 40 years ago, I said the same thing, and it happened, but it took a few more years. So we have this uh, very difficult situation that the money flows in right at the peak of spending, we're just on the edge of tilting over to a recession where the uh, revenue of the state drops by tens of billions and the jobs uh, are lost and we have a lot of stress. The only way you make that is you gotta have reserves. You gotta have cash in the bank. When I took over, we were 27 billion in the hole. Now we got a rainy day fund of 14 billion. I'm leaving that for the next guy. I'm sure he's gonna spend it the first year, but at least he's got it. All right. <clears throat> It'd be better if we added some more regular tax system, but I'm going to leave that to the next governor, too. You figure out how to reform the taxes. Uh, not, not that easy, because, uh, well, that's a whole other story. I don't have to explain that to you. Uh, <laughs> so the other thing I want to mention, the, the importance of uh, this event has been going on for a long time. And you can look back, uh, those who have been coming year after year, and you can see the progress, the problems, the complaints, but every year, California moves uh, to a new plateau. And I think that sense of history is very important. We are a state of change. Since the gold rush, we've been changing at a very rapid rate. Uh, San Francisco went from uh, a few hundred people to 20,000 in a matter of a, a couple of years after, the, after 1848, when gold was discovered. So we're constantly changing, but to keep our balance and uh, the clarity of what we're doing, we have to know where we came from. We have to know where we are, and we have to know where we're going. So we have news, which every day changes and uh, evaporates after six hours. It's called a news cycle. But there are enduring values, and those enduring values uh, can be discovered if we look at what our forebears have done. If we look at what e each of our family members, our neighbors, uh, we have created this amazing place called California, and it works because we're all in it together. It's getting more complicated. Uh, the issues that we're dealing with, uh, technology, the tax structure, the prison system, the schools, the university, very complicated. And when you have to take votes on this, very hard to know what it is. And I'd say, uh, if you haven't been around for 40 years, I don't know that I trust you. Yeah, they don't know what the hell they're doing because it's so damn complicated. So this Nancy McFadden, she knew stuff because she did stuff. Now, when I first started, I used to say, take all the ins and throw them out. Take the outs and put them in. Uh, I used to think uh, experience was bunk. Now I say there is no substitute for experience, <laughs> which is true. But you got to keep her fresh. All right. The other big ch problem we got is the changing climate. Uh, we had droughts even before climate change in, in the Middle Ages. They say California had a 150-year drought between 850 AD and 1000. So we have to be prepared. And that's another reason, investment in our water, our water systems, storage, storage conveyance, uh, as well as recycling uh, and ultimately uh, water uh, desalinization. So there's a lot of stuff that we got to do. It all costs money, and somehow we got to create a consensus. And I can tell you the two parties have never been so far apart. You know, they talk different, uh, they go to different restaurants, uh, they have different ideas, probably go to different churches. We got to pull together. America's never been more divided. California, in many ways, has never been more divided. But I think all of you in this room see uh, the power of this state, its glory, its true value. And if we recognize that, if we try to do our part, then we'll keep it great. We'll keep it green, we'll keep it golden, and we'll keep it first. California is number one because our businesses are number one, our workforce is number one, our universities, we all pull together. Yes, we fight. You even used to fight with me. When I first ran against Meg Whitman, the chamber was taking ads out against me, not for me. But you know what? I forgive you. Because <laughs> it didn't make a damn bit of difference. 
It takes experience. You know, when I was running, I have to say this, because I, my wife was my campaign manager. She was quite good. My opponent in that election in 2010 spent $100 million to Labor Day before I spent my first million. I think she hired 150 people. We had seven. But if you got Ann Brown on your side, and if I'm part of the picture, you only need seven against 150. <laughs> so anyway, brains count, money counts, and good ideas count. Thank you very much.